We all love a comeback story, and that comeback story is Mauricio Dubon. He came back from somebody that the Giants did not want, and he became an invaluable member of the Houston Astros last year. But now, for the first time, he is arbitration eligible, and he's going in front of a hearing. It was supposed to be today. We have not heard the results yet, but until then, we're going to talk about what likely is to happen on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric, the man, Heisman, and Brett, H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter or X at Eric Talks Astros. You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett is doing something else with Athletically Decline tonight, so I've decided to go ahead and do a solo show tonight. Uh, but I'm excited to uh, be doing this because I was hoping to be talking about what happened with Mauricio Dubon, but that news has not come out yet. Uh, the hearing, according to Chandler Rome, was supposed to be today, so maybe we'll find out something. Uh, but that does not mean he's going anywhere if the results come out bad for him, but we'll talk about what that means. We'll go ahead and talk about the spring training hat. That seems to be on everybody's mind right now. Joe Smith retired last year, uh, last week. So I, we haven't talked about that yet. Also, I want to talk a little bit about Bob Watson. Uh, this is uh, a former Astros player that I uh, wanted to highlight a little bit. And Bobby Witt Jr., he got some money. He got paid. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit in relation to Kyle Tucker. Is that what it's going to take to maybe get Kyle Tucker to stay in the Houston Astros uniform? And in Las Vegas, it's the teachers versus the ace. Is that what's really going on there? So a lot for us to discuss on this edition of Locked on Astros podcast. And thank you for becoming an everyday or somebody that listens to our podcast every day, whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. more new customers join today and you get $200 in bonus bets. If your first bet of $5 or more wins, Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started today. So um, if you missed the intro, we are all kind of waiting for Mauricio Dubon, uh, the results of the arbitration hearing. And I've actually been kind of refreshing my my feed for the past hour or so. I wanted to just go ahead and record this, do this like around five o'clock or so. But for some reason, even though the hearing was supposed to be today, it, nothing has come out. So that doesn't mean anything. That just means that they, they have not released the information or maybe it was tomorrow. Um, so we'll see uh, what happens. So looking at what Mauricio Devon wants, he wants 3.5 million. The Astros want to give him 3 million. So definitely a situation where it's only 500,000. So why go why go through the smear contest? Uh, that's basically what arbitration is. Well, uh, Doobie, we really like you. We think that you're a great player, but there's we don't like this, and we think that this devalues your your um, money, um, and you didn't play a full season. You're not an everyday player and everything like this. And Dubon could say, well, I basically saved your season. What if I was not there? Who would have saved your butt when Jose Altuve went on the IL for half the season? So there's, I guess if you're the arbitrator, it's going to be a hard way to look at who wins. I've seen a lot of false information on the, on X today. Uh, a lot of people have said, well, maybe they'll meet in the middle. There's no meeting in the middle. It's either A or B, 3.5 or 3 million. There's them, their meeting in the middle was before they had to go ahead and file the arbitration paperwork. So uh, they missed that chance. So right now they're going to go ahead and go to battle. And the Astros basically have to say, this is why we think he's only worth $3 million. And this is why Dubon, Dubon is going to go out there and say, this is why he I'm worth more. 
And so why are the Astros making such a big deal about it? Because Dubon is going to be with the Astros for another, what, two, three years. He's going to go, keep on going up. If he plays like he did last year, he had a career high in home runs. He had a career high in stolen bases. And if you look at everything that he did for uh, last year, uh, triples, doubles, hits, RBIs, all career highs. And he also played a lot of games. He um, he was a finalist in the Gold Glove, and he was the um, only Gold Glove winner from uh, 2023 as a utility player. So it's definitely something that he earned. He earned a big raise. And so, but the Astros know that they've got a good player in him. And so they're trying to keep his value down. Because as you see with Kyle Tucker, Kyle Tucker had uh, the year before he only earned five million, but now that jumped from five million to twelve million. So they know that each year there's going to be a big jump. So uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to kind of make it where it's not going to jump so much the next year. So um, yeah, arbitration can be messy, as somebody in the chat says, but it's also can it's just business. And I think the players know this. I think the team knows it. Both sides want what's best for them. But he's uh, this is the first time arbitration eligible. He's not an everyday player. He's gonna be on the bench this year uh, unless there's some unless Jake Myers doesn't cut it out as a center fielder or the Astros have some type of injury, he's going to be on bench. He's going to be your uh, super utility guy, but he's not going to play every day. So uh, the question is, who's going to win? Um, at this point, I would say the Astros would likely win. But Dubon, after winning a gold glove, I think he does have some leverage there. So I would say that it's probably 60-40 to the Astros winning, but it's going to be a little tight. So maybe this is one of those old fashioned, like uh, uh, they're waiting for the verdict in the jury. And so that they, they're like, well, this is going to go into overtime. So let's go and get Chinese food and let's go and wait uh, for the jury to come up with the verdict. So I don't know if that's what's happening here, but in my head, that's what I want to uh, kind of imagine is going on there. So um, I, I went ahead. Oh, I, I thought I put this in here, but let me go ahead and add this real quick. Um, so today the Astros uh, released uh, the, it was the spring training hat and last year's spring training hat. I actually meant to buy, I just never got a chance to get it, but this year's spring training hat has been a, a lot of people on X social media, Instagram, TikTok have been making a lot of comments. Like they don't like it. Uh, it's not that good a look. So I'm going to go and put it on the screen real quick. And you tell me in the chat. What do you think about it? All right. So for those of y'all listening on the podcast, this is a orange hat. It's kind of orange. It's kind of matches the orange on our, on our little timeline over there. It's got kind of a more reddish orange bill and it's got the Astros logo and it's got the 24 years in uh, Florida. So it's not a bad look. It's not, doesn't really have a lot of blue in it. That would be my little issue with it but overall um i would say the i if you look at it i see where the red's coming from because if you look at the astros logo i mean not that it's not really red but it's like a uh, dark orange uh but if you look at the h the star behind the h part of that is that color so they're kind of blending into that color so i kind of like the way that they're dripping uh, the color from the star into parts of the hat, including the top of the hat. So overall, it's not a bad look. I'm more of a, uh, if it's going to be orange, I like it to be more of a one color hat. But uh, what do y'all think? Would you buy this hat in spring training? Um, when we come back in a second, I did ask Brett to go ahead and make a little video with his opinion. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. But Definitely, I want to know your opinion. So go ahead and put that in the comments. Hey guys, the Super Bowl's coming up and we're all getting super excited. I know uh, everybody's talking about, well, how many times will Taylor Swift be on the screen, everything like that. But 
Uh, happy Super Bowl week to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grab, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. So um, are, you getting, are you talking about how many touchdowns? I, I've heard some people at work that were talking about if I could bet, I would go ahead and bet on how many touchdowns Mahomes would get and how, how what the over under is for the 49ers to win. So uh, the Chiefs, sorry, the Chiefs. I don't know why I said 49ers, but the Chiefs. So a lot of focus has been on the Chiefs. So FanDuel's has so many ways for you to end the season with a W or two or three. Not only can you bet on who would win the Super Bowl, 58, but also FanDuel helps you bet on which player could score a touchdown, how many points will be scored overall, and so much more. So new customers can join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. And guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Wherever you listen to your podcasts, go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast. But don't forget to check out Locked on Sports today. It's the first 24-7 streaming channel. It's got all the news you need to know 24-7. Just right there, NFL, NBA, MLB, what's going on? Who's, uh, who are the Yankees going to? If you care about that, who are the Yankees going to sign to save their their uh, offseason? So there's all that talk that's going around there. But everybody's wondering about this the Super Bowl and NFL right now. So go ahead and check out Locked On Sports today for all the news you need to know 24-7. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this video from Brett real quick. Uh, he had his comments, um, I think he put in here. Oh, I thought he did or maybe oh i thought he put the video in here but apparently he did not uh so anyway um but i'll i'll ask him to send that to me so i can get that in there but um definitely uh let me put my thing back up there i swear it was in there but uh brett had some comments on it he didn't really like the hat too much so uh, we'll look at y'all uh, what y'all thought as well but uh, a lot of people said it's okay but it's not the best of hats so um going away from that i'll uh, maybe throw in the uh that at the end or brett can do it on the i, I think he already created a short on the side anyway but uh so talk going on to joe smith joe smith was a houston astro for not too long, but uh, he did retire this past Wednesday. So this is something that I guess Brett and I missed. But this is uh, he was with the Astros for a few seasons. So happy retirement, Joe Smith. And um, so congratulations on I didn't realize how old he was. So he was uh, he's 39 years old. So um, he spent some time with the Astros, but he's he played baseball for 15 years. He was drafted in third round of the 2006 draft. So now he's 39 and uh, he had 13 straight seasons of an ERA of 13.83 or better. So he was a great reliever and the Astros uh, had a great one while he was here. So congratulations. So moving on to uh, what the Astros are doing. So in honor of Black History Month, they're, um, they're honoring, uh, I guess, every day a uh, – former Astro that uh, made their mark with the Houston Astros. And today was Bob Watson. Uh, he was a two-time All-Star. He was actually retired by the Houston Astros, his number, in 2021. And so just kind of give you a summary of uh, Bob Watson. If you, as like me, you aren't really paying that much attention to the Astros back in that time. But he played for the Astros uh, from 66 to 79. I was born in 78, so that really I didn't really get to watch him play. But uh, after he retired, he was the coach for the A's for four years before joining the Astros front office in 1993. Uh, then he was the Yankees general manager from 1995 to 1998, during which the, the Yankees won the World Series in 1996. Congratulations, Bob Watson. That's the only reason I'll celebrate that. 
World Series. Um, he also later served as MLB's vice president in charge of discipline and vice president of rules and on field operations from 2002 to 2010. So like I said, he was inducted to the Astros uh, Hall of Fame back in 2021. So thank you for everything you did for the Houston Astros. And uh, we miss Jimmy Wynn, the toy cannon last uh, week, but uh, he also had a great career with the Houston Astros. But uh, moving on to Bobby Witt Jr. I know we all saw that money today and we're like, wow, that's a lot of money. Uh, that was a lot of money. So if you're looking at the largest contract in MLB history right now, you got Shohei Itani, 700 million. You got Mike Trout, 425 million. Now you have Bobby Witt Jr., 377 million if all the options are exercised. So it's a 11-year, $288.7 million guaranteed contract. He has three uh, club options for three years of $89 million from 2035 to 2037. I don't even know what I'm be doing in 2023 and 2020, uh, 2037. So it's just crazy that these guys know that they're going to be playing with this one team for that, that long. So the reason why I bring this up is not to talk about another millionaire, but to talk about is this what the Astros has have been kind of hesitant to do with somebody like Kyle Tucker? I know you can't compare the two. Uh, Bobby Wood Jr., this is his uh, – he's only been in the big leagues for two years. And now um, if you're looking to – if you're looking at what happened with Kyle Tucker, he's in his, uh, what, sixth season. So they're different ages. Bobby Witt Jr. is 22 or 23. You have Kyle Tucker, who's 27. So yes, they're different times of their career. But are you going to have to give Kyle Tucker this type of contract to get him to say something like 30 million? So let me kind of give you the breakdown for Bobby Witt. So in 2024, he's only going to get uh, 2 million, 2025, 7 million, 2026, 13 million. So uh, and then 2027, 19 million. So what they did was basically bought out some of the pre-arb years and then arbitration years. And then from there, it goes to 30 million, 35 million, all the way down. I mean, they're basically player options. And from 2031 to 2034, uh, which is basically what they're going to, I don't think he's going to opt out of that. So uh, $35 million a year. Then in uh, 2035, 33, then 2036, 28, and 28 million. So that's a lot of money to kind of just throw out there. So looking at the money, I know that there are two different positions. You have Kyle Tucker that plays right field, and then you have uh, Bobby Witt Jr. who plays shortstop, and he's can steal bases. He can hit home runs. He can hit for a batting average. He's the five-tool player, play great defense. So if Bobby Wood Jr. is worth $35 million a year, how much is Kyle Tucker going to be worth? He's going to be worth at least $30 million per year. So the Astros are probably trying to decide how much are we going to have to uh, pay him? And I also saw um, somebody mentioned this on the chat, and I've, I've been seeing this on X today. Mauricio Dubon is easily replaceable. The Astros have team control of him for the next three years. This is not about him going bye-bye. This is just about them kind of um, setting a uh, – just, I guess, being on good terms with him, just not arguing over the 500000 I mean, I know 500000 to you and me, that's a lot of money. But to baseball players, that's really not a lot of money. So the question is, is that worth it? But if you're looking at Kyle Tucker, he's making $12 million this year. And uh, he's got one more year of arbitration, and then he'll be a free agent himself. So the question is, what would that go up to? That's probably going to go all the way up to, what, $25 million, something like that anyway. So if you're already going to have to pay $25 million, is it worth it just to go ahead and maybe pay him $30 million and just try to extend him? 
if you're already over the luxury tax threshold, you might as well. It's just money, right? You want to win a World Series. So, um, but the question is, you can't extend everybody. Jose Altuve, you must. You absolutely got to do it. So, um, but I think that, I think if you're looking at what's going on with um, with Kyle Tucker, I I want him to say he's an Astro. I think that he, I think that he can still get better, but I don't know if the Astros are going to be able to afford to put everything in there. So in a second, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about what um, Joe Espada had to say about Trey Cabbage. But before that, we're going to talk about the teachers versus the A's. What am I talking about? Well, I'll have to address that in a second because um, the teachers are trying to sue uh, basically the governor of Nevada for the A's and trying to build a stadium. So we'll talk about that in a second. Hey, guys, what if your car won't start in the morning and you, you need to be at work? Well, I know you probably don't have time to get on eBay Motors, but if you're able to get the parts ahead of time, if you know you need something, why don't you try eBay Motors? It's passion, drive, and patience. That's what brings home a winning trophy, just like the Houston Astros did. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, from supercharger to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is also guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because e with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply eBay Motors guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. So, guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us, and go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Become an everyday or subscribe to this podcast. But go and check out Locked On Sports today. It's the first twenty-four-seven streaming channel out there with all the news from across sports, with everything you need to know with right there 24 seven. So go and check out locked on sports today and hopefully the Astros will have some, a lot of great news this season. So we could be featured on there a lot. All right. So uh, the teachers versus the A's. Um, as a teacher, we've always had this issue about whether to pass or play students at times. And that's not what this conversation is about. But right now in Nevada, the, the governor is trying to come up with a whole bunch of money to build a stadium so the Oakland A's can come to uh, play in Las Vegas. And they want baseball there. But the teachers uh, union is saying, no, we don't think that you should be spending all this money to build a stadium. We think that you should be improving the education system and not – we don't care about baseball. What about the future of our kids? And so this is essentially what's going on with this, uh, this whole suit. And we don't know if it's going to go, if you read the whole article in the athletic, um, it's, they don't know if it's going to go to a public vote or anything, but it's just something that's already been, it's, it's been already vetoed once, but they're basically calling it the schools over stadiums. So they said that they should improve schools before they try to bring another stadium to Las Vegas. We already know that the Raiders moved to Las Vegas. Um, so uh, they think that this should be more important. So my question is, if the A's do move over there, do the teachers have to boycott or just not go to the A's games or something like that? But I'm not going to look too deep into that, but uh, that was just a little interesting uh, tidbit. So uh, talking about Trey Cabbage, I know that a lot of people are wondering about what his role is. And then uh, looking at uh, Mercy Debon, who we're still waiting. I'm still updating, like seeing 
if there's any news, but maybe the arbitration hearing was actually tomorrow or something, but uh, Channel Rome did say it was supposed to be today. I thought it was supposed to be today as well, but uh, it's okay. So uh, just looking at what um, Joe Spada said about Trey Cabbage. He said that uh, Trey Cabbage is somebody that we were um, interested in. I think he's going to spring training to showcase what we all think he's capable of doing. We like what we see. We like what we've heard from people in the industry about what he's capable of of doing. I think if he goes and shows he can hit for power and cut down on the swing and miss, I think he's got a good shot at making the club. Uh, he also said that, uh, where is it? He, he's, he said that he's an adjustment away from figuring out some stuff at the plate and being a legit, a legit threat offensively. So he, uh, on Trey cabbage, I guess he talked to Trey cabbage. He said he really sounded excited He's going to get down to spring training facilities early to get acclimated and was asking if there's going to be any coaches down there early to work out. And I said, yes, I'll be down there. That's Joe Spada, not Eric Heisman. But uh, we have a minor league mini camp going on. So he sounded really excited and ready to take the field and show what he's capable of doing. So I'm, I know a lot of people have been like, well, he's just somebody that was going to be DFA'd by the a, the Angels. He can't be that good of a player. Sometimes with age, sometimes with just frustration, you just give up on a player. Ask Jeff Luno about J.D. Martinez. Sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, I don't think this guy is going to be any good. And even J.D. Martinez at that time, he was starting to find a swing. But the Astros needed a roster spot. And the Angels needed a roster spot because they've been making some moves this offseason. So Trey Cabbage has power. He's got speed. He strikes out almost 50% of the time. So, yes, uh, we said this on an earlier podcast. He does need to work on that. But he can play first base. He can uh, play in outfield. So uh, he has advantage there over Corey Jolks. Um, Kessinger can play all over the infield. So there's, I think if he has a good spring training, there's a shot. You could be buying cabbage jerseys at Mid Maid Park. Uh, that would be kind of cool. Not as cool as buying Seth beer jerseys. I still think the Astros missed out on a good mar marketing app, um, thing with that. So uh, anyway, but looking at what's going on with um, a former pitching great, Johnny Cueto, he's thinking about trying to come back to baseball. And if he does, he's 38 years old. He's, this will be his 17th year. He's trying to make a comeback. So would you like the Astros to make a, take a flyer on J Johnny Cueto? I mean, he r ranks fifth all time in wins on Dominican pitchers. So would you take a risk on that? Uh, just as, just in case, I don't think he's going to cost a lot of money unless he's still like throwing in the heat or anything. So that's just another name that's thrown out there. But what's interesting is that World Series hero, Jordan Montgomery, is still a free agent out there. So I think the Rangers are still trying to figure out what they're going to do. Are they going to spend some money? I think the TV network has a lot to do with that because uh, they're, they're kind of being uh, handcuffed right now. And have you ever played catch with your dad, maybe your mom? in the front yard and then somebody stops and gets out of the car and says, Hey, can I play catch with you? That's what happened. To this kid named Blake Foley. He was just playing catch with his mom. And then this, the car stops and Ryan Presley gets out of the car and says, Hey, can I play catch with your son? And so uh, Blake was like, no way is he wanting to play catch with me. I'm like, Holy cow, this is crazy. So Blake, uh, like Presley lives in the neighborhood. So he's seen Blake around. So th th they're not like total strangers or anything, but it's just cool. Uh, that just shows what type of guy Ryan Presley is. He's going to stop and make some kids year. I mean, Ryan Presley just come in and say, hey, let's play catch. So uh, Blake said that it was uh, a little nervous at first. I got way more comfortable after the first five throws. I was like, don't miss it. Don't miss it. 
And he said, my mom is great, but if I had a chance, I'd play with an MLB baseball player every time. So guys, if that shows you what type of guy Ryan Presley is, I don't think the closer situation is going to be an issue. And I don't think he's really worrying about that right now. And don't worry about the Lockdown Astros podcast either. We'll be here for you all off season. And make sure you go and subscribe to us. Make make sure you make us your first list. Give me a listen to your podcast. Go and check out the Lockdown. And tomorrow we'll probably be talking about the results of the arbitration hearing because they didn't come out today. So uh, my name is Eric Heisman. Brett Chancey will be back tomorrow. And we are the Lockdown Astros podcast. And we will see you tomorrow. And Go stress. Yeehaw!